Magnetic Flux, and Faraday's Law. So we have two goals in this particular session. First we'll talk about magnetic flux, and then we'll introduce Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction, which is incredibly important. It's the basics, basis of most electricity generation. So let's start with flux. Now, if you hear the word flux, that actually has various meanings, and I'll show you some uh, dictionary definitions. Uh, this one here, continuous change, passage movement, his political views are in a state of flux. You might hear that one during the election season. We are especially interested in this one, not this one actually, but this one, a quantity expressing the strength of a field of, or a field of force in a given area. Okay, lots of other ones. Okay, when you're soldering stuff together, you can t use flux, lots of other things. Um, anyway, lots of different definitions, but our focus will be this one here. Okay, so when we talk about magnetic flux, we're really expressing something about the field, and this is exactly what it means. Magnetic flux, a measure of the number of magnetic field lines passing through an area. Okay, so again, magnetic flux measure the number of magnetic field lines passing through an area. So we define the area of the loop as a vector. Its uh, magnitude, of course, is the usual, you know, pi r squared or length times width, but the direction of the area vector is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. And when you do that, you can express the magnetic flux like so. So the Greek letter capital Phi with a B is the magnetic flux is the magnitude of the field times the magnitude of the area vector multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the field and the area vector. Again, don't forget that the area vector is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. Our unit for flux, we can simply write Tesla meters squared, field units times area units, or we can call it the Weber, but one Weber is simply one Tesla meter squared. Okay, so here's flux, and pictorially, here we have an area, could be like, you know, a sheet of paper. And in the top left picture, we've got lots of field lines passing through that area. In other words, lots of flux. Uh, if you rotate the direction of your piece of paper so that no field lines pass through it, then you've got no flux at all. We're trying to count the number of field lines passing through the piece of paper. Well, if your area vector is perpendicular to your field, then you get no flux. And this bottom picture is kind of intermediate between those two states. So it's got some flux, but not nearly as much as when you hold it uh, so the field lines are going directly through it. Okay, so we're just simply counting the field lines through a particular area. That brings us to Faraday's Law. So Faraday's Law is interesting. It says that the voltage induced in a coil of n turns is given by the rate of change of magnetic flux. So here's our Faraday's Law. Voltage, that's what's on the left-hand side. It's EMF here, but you can think of that as a voltage. Uh, is, interestingly, there's a minus sign there. We'll talk about that separately. Minus n delta flux over delta t. So, this has an incredible number of practical applications, especially when it comes to generating and distributing electricity. So, we call this voltage that is induced by a change of magnetic flux an induced EMF. So, basically, changing the magnetic flux through a loop or a coil, makes the loop or coil act like a battery. And so that's what drives a the current. There's no battery actually there, but the circuit acts as if there's a battery in it when the flux through it is changing. So we can write this down. Faraday's law again is EMF, the induced EMF, is minus N delta flux over delta T. And flux, of course, is BA cosine theta. So we can say a change in any one of those three variables gets us a voltage. Okay, so that gives us three ways to generate a voltage. So first, you can simply change the field. 
You can do that very easily by moving a magnet around near a coil of wire or a loop of wire. You can change the area. That's pretty easy to do too. You can squeeze the loop, change its shape, something like that. Uh, what is often done instead is change the orientation of the loop with respect to the field. So often you can spin the loop near a magnet or you can actually have the loop fixed and rotate magnets around it. And that's actually how a lot of uh, electric power plants work so through that process. Okay, so that is basically it for our introduction to Faraday's Law and how you can generate electricity with just magnetic field and a coil of wire.